Hey, Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, and Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Saturday mornings with Jim Valley, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 Eastern, and Sundays with Andrew Zarian. And by the way, immediately following this show today will be, we're live, pal! And uh, the special guest on the show with Andrew and Garrett will be our own Dave Meltzer. He's doing a live Q&A. So if you want to stick around after this show, you can check that out coming up next. You're on Twitch and video.f4wonline.com. But we got a lot of news to get into here today. It is Tuesday on this show. You know what that means. Tonight is NXT. We'll talk about the lineup for the show. They got like... They got like three weeks worth of stuff lined up for tonight. Eight segments announced thus far. We've got Dynamite for tomorrow, which, as uh, far as I know, still only has three segments announced. So we'll tell you about that. We've already got two segments announced for the Raw, the final Raw before WrestleMania this coming Monday. We've got a match and the announcement that The Rock and Roman Reigns will both be on Monday Night Raw this coming Monday, which is uh, that's going to be a big show. The Rock made a surprise. Actually, they did a rare. He made two surprise appearances last night on Raw. He was unannounced, and he showed up at the beginning of the show. And then they teased that he left, but he actually came back for an angle at the end of the show. An angle that involved blood. And it was not accidental, fortuitous blood. The Blade is back. And they used it in the main event of the show. We'll tell you about that. We got the lineup for WrestleMania. We got a lot to talk about, including the uh, new WWE consensual relationships policy. Brandon Thurston and John Pollock reported on. We'll tell you about that, what has changed, and uh, plenty more. If you want to text us today, 425-780-7566. That is 425-780-7566. F4W online at gmail.com, as well as F4W online threads, Instagram, and Cameo. At Brian Alvarez on X. Back in a moment, Observer Live. And to you, Mr. Khan. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Khan. You're welcome. Thank you for believing in someone who left a guaranteed spotlight for something new. Someone who isn't always perfect, isn't always kind, but who is always determined to do her best. Renee Paquette. Thank you. And as for what's next, Anthony, come on, let's spoil your little surprise. Come on, I'm sick of alluding to her. Come on, I am sick of the cryptic hints, aren't we all? I don't care if it's a big business, I don't care if it's next week. Wendy Richter? I am going to fuck you up. <laughs> and to anyone else who wants my title, you can fuck off. There's a ranking system now and you can bloody well use it. All right? Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, any questions from the media? Uh, tread lightly. And make it quick because if I don't leave soon, there's going to be piss all over the seat. <laughs> so... If you could. Um, Lyric Swinton, SNME Radio, you talked about the ranking system for your title. Um, how do you feel about your protege's um, current ranking on those rankings, Mariah May? I think she's doing just fine. Um, she's, she's doing great. I'm, I'm very proud. Doing a great job. But she's not quite ready. So um, let's not confuse her with those kinds of questions. Anyone else? Questions? Hi, Tony. So, as you alluded to before, Mariah May is obviously dressed as an older version of your character. So, was that your idea? Was that her idea? <sighs> Ideas. Ideas. I said, didn't I? I said to Diana. I would give her the old Tony Storm and so much more. And here it is. Look at her. Look at her. Fantastic. Anyone else? 
ideas come from so many places. Yes. Tony Stumeyer from Sports Guys Talking Wrestling. Have you talked to Susan Tex Green lately? No. Next question. <laughs> I believe we're done here this evening. Well, thank you, champ. Are we ready to get fucked up or what? Huh? Thanks, champ. Thank you, sir. Come here, bring it in, big man. I'm so, I love you. I love you. You're doing a fantastic job. In six to eight years, you're going to really blossom. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, darlings. Thanks, champ. Be good. Thank you very much. Stay safe. <coughs>the show brian alvarez here wrestling observer live mike semper bb also wrestling observer.com everybody you know okay after that bridge yeah thank holy we, smokes yeah that uh terrible uh thoughts to the people of baltimore today you know for the francis scott key bridge going down this morning it was something my wife who's a lot of her family's from over uh, that side of the city and ran in and michael you know the key bridge collapsed and then just watching it over and over again on tv it was just very scary if this would have happened during the day it could have been hundreds of people when did it, it happen have, it happened at about 1 30 in the morning okay because there and were people that went down unfortunately yeah there were eight construction workers that were filling potholes in on the bridge and brian they're still looking for six of them, which is now it's turned into a recovery mission as opposed to, you know, a finding mission. But the two people they did pull out of the water, one is in critical condition at Johns Hopkins. The other one, though, walked away. Was fine. From the hospital in is yes. fine. So a miracle that it was not more people. And But obviously, you know, they were all residents who lived I believe in, in, in Dundalk and in Essex and Sparrows Point and around in that area. And, you know, the loss of life is, is bad. And the ripple effects this is going to have economically, traffic-wise, for a lot of different reasons is it's going to be tough for the area. And it's just going to be something that, you know, hopefully can be fixed soon. And that's that's for sure. Just sad. Very, very sad. You know, I don't want to make light of this. I'm not attempting to make light of this. But I was reading about the uh, where the, the boat hit. Yes. And uh, the the term they used was, it was a rather flimsy part of the bridge. And I was like, what? Well, Why is there a flimsy part? Because we always go to, uh, we always go to uh, Cannon Beach, and there's a big bridge that goes uh, from Washington to Oregon, if you, if you go a certain way. And, uh, man, I look at that bridge, and it's like, that bridge is, that bridge looks old. And, you know, they're always like, oh, well, we'll be working, we'll be doing, uh, you know, maintenance on the bridge or whatever. And I'm like, I'm never, I'm never comfortable going over that bridge. And uh, I have friends who will not go over that bridge. And uh, stuff like that is always like, man, oh, man, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, this, it was built in 1977. It took them five years to build, and it came down in five seconds. And usually when you hear about redundancy... It's a bad thing, you know, when it comes to having it in your business or something. But redundancy, there was no redundancy on the bridge, the way that the, the spans were set up. There was no redundancy, apparently, checks on the boat, which lost power. Yes, they had they had two incidents reported on the boat, and it yeah. just kept sailing. Yeah, and then, you know, some, because the steering went out, and that plume of black smoke could have been them trying to adjust it at the last minute. They're looking into all that sort of stuff. That was a scary part this morning with people that... We're wondering if it was done intentionally or anything like that. That is not the case from what everybody is saying. But it's, you know, it's scary. And we live in an area where there's nothing but bridges. I mean, and again, the issue, too, a lot of it is going to be, you know, economic impacts on business and, you know, supplies. Because of all the things that go in and out of that area. And you can't go through the two harbor, tu the harbor tunnel and the McHenry tunnel. Because, you know, there's some trucks that are too big or too wide and or they have hazardous materials. So it's going to push everything west and they're already doing construction on a lot of that part. So I know this is super too incredibly local for a lot of people and too real for a lot of people to want to hear right now. But it's a it really was a, a something that shook up the area, something fierce. Yeah. And uh, somebody here mentioned the bridge was a mile. The the bridge, the Astoria Bridge spanning Washington, Oregon. Four miles. Yeah. Four miles. So anyway, 
you got to come over here. I mean, that's we're in a really weird area. There are not a whole lot of tunnels that go under the water and we have two in baltimore like i'm still there but you know fort McHenry and the harbor tunnel which go under the water and then we have the chesapeake bay bridge tunnel and somebody can look that up it, that's like it feels like it's a million miles long and you actually go under the water twice and it is a an amazing piece of engineering but wow. this is also going to make a lot of people look at, at how their bridges are and if they're updated enough to get those bumpers around where hopefully it prevents something like this in the future uh, on the wrestling side of news, WWE's policy on consensual relationships has been made public. Brandon Thurston, John Pollock, published a three-page document detailing the company's stance on romantic or intimate relationships in the workplace. It was developed in June of 2023, while Vince served as executive chairman. It said to promote a productive environment free from conflicts, as well as favoritism and unfair advantage, whether perceived or real, WWE has implemented the following policy and guidelines related to consensual relationships in the workplace. Policy applies to all employees, regardless of rank or title. All employees should recognize the possible negative consequences of romantic, intimate, or sexual relationships in the workplace. Consensual relationships can comprise the integrity of supervisory responsibility, create the potential for abuse of authority, or cause problems due to perceptions of favoritism by others. And this policy prescribes actions required to address conflicts, further specifies a situation where consensual relationships are prohibited. So they've got a... You can go up there and read the entire thing. And uh, it says here that Post Wrestling spoke with Dr. Lisa... Miney Arrow, professor of management at Fairfield University about the policy, authored several books related to gender and power dynamics in professional settings, said the policy does not go far enough, said it's an okay policy, better than most, but still inadequate. I believe that uh, the number is uh, the number of, of corporations that even have this is, is 30%. So 70% don't even have one. WWE has one now. But she said they don't address the issue of hierarchical relationships where one person in the relationship is subordinate to the other. Obviously, that's a conflict of interest. And Michael Z. Green, director of Workplace Law Program at Texas A&M, says the policy does not go far enough, particularly those under the heading Prohibitions Regarding Consensual Relationships. He says it should say, if any such officer seeks to engage in a consensual relationship with a subordinate, or does, the WWE consider such action as bad judgment warranting cause for immediate termination from the executive position the person holds. I'm trying to find uh, what they said exactly about it. I don't want to mess this up. But I, I believe that they, they state that it is discouraged. Which, like, what does that mean? Well, that you know. I mean, it, it, it does need to be more than it's discouraged. I mean, is it allowed or not? If it's not allowed, then it's not allowed. But what does discouraged mean? We don't want you to do it, but if you do it, nah, you know. Yeah, but then when you get into a business that is going to outlaw a relationship, you know, there is a there is a medium that needs to be met. You know, there there absolutely does. And they do mention in this about... You know, you can't compromise the integrity of a supervisory responsibility. So it does touch on it a little bit there. But, you know, will they have to do more as things go on and things unfold? Maybe they're going to have to, and maybe they're going to have to tighten up the language. But as the doctor mentioned, there are many businesses who don't have this at all for one reason or the other. They don't want to involve their HR and, and get into it or for whatever the reasons may be. So at least they have something. And then we have at least something now moving forward that it can at least be adapted and adjusted. It's nice to actually see this. So uh, there's more here. Let's see if I can. This thing is so long. Uh, employees are encouraged to report concerns, et cetera, et cetera. Um, WWE strongly discourages. Here's the ex exact phrasing. WWE strongly discourages consensual relationships involving any WWE board member, executive team member, such as the CEO, president, CFO, chief content officer, chief legal, or chief human resources officer. 
So uh, it says, in the event an executive team member is involved in such a relationship, it must be disclosed in writing to the lead independent director of the board, in addition to the chief human resources officer. So you cannot do this allegedly without alerting people from this point forward. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Corey Lee with the Wrestling Observer. Um, how's your back? Because uh, you. Mate, my ass is so bad. <laughs> Can I show like a little bit of it? Like, I won't show... You want to show more of it? I'm not going to show you my cheek, right? But like, <laughs> bro, look how bad oh, that wow. is. Oh, yeah, that, 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 that spot was pretty sucked insane. so yeah. much. I want to make sure that you're okay, obviously. Uh, the second question I actually had is kind of your mindset now. You are now full-time U.S.-based wrestler, which is you, you've never done that. You basically you've done, obviously the Indies in England, Japan. I mean, you've done matches over like, here. Yeah, just dip my toes into it. Yeah, but now you're actually going to be going on American TV every week. Mm-hmm. What is your mindset about how you kind of almost have? Do you have to change your style? Or you're just going to be like, you know what? I'm going to be Will Osprey, and I, I'm going to make the basically the TV adapt to me. I mean, the one thing I'm doing my best to do is I'm trying my best not to swear. Like, God, oh, that it's so hard. It's well, like, here you can. You feel free to no, no, off the air. I mean, here, yeah. That's, yeah. Oh, FCC. Oh, is no. yeah, but, like, <laughs> but I was just kind of like, mate, like, even, like, cutting promos now, like, that, that's, like, a real hard task for me to do because I've never done it, like, into an American audience. A lot of our stuff in Japan was always backstage. So, like, I, I knew when I wanted to make the jump, I was, like, really, I'm really trying hard at that and really trying, like, to learn that style because I'm all new at this. Like, everything that you see right in front of you is all going to be, like, me experiencing something completely new but like my mindset right now is like I have been screaming down the lens of a Japanese camera that I am the best in the world and right now I've never done this I've never been full-time in America Uh, and it's it's a lot of things but it's mainly an anxiety it's an anxiety of like for ages like I know when the bell rings like I, I can do it but like it's not just the bell ringing anymore. It's about showing personality. It's about connecting with the crowds, and like that's my main focus now. Is just, just like I want to show my personality because I'm a thing. I'm a little bit of a cheeky bugger, so like I like to I like to show that off. And like this is gonna be like a, a really rough road, not rough road, but it's gonna be like it's gonna be hard to like work out these navigations. But like I'm ready, man. Like I'm ready to do it. I'm ready to be completely vulnerable out there. And just like if, if I mess up, I shut you up to me. Like, I, I don't mind. Like. I'm here to learn, and like I'm not I'm not going to get it right, right away, but like, it, like I'm doing my best, and I think like honestly out there today, I think if that's the the first thing that I've got, like <laughs> everyone's fucked, eh? <laughs> <laughs> And the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. So I should note, in regards to this policy here, that, uh, you know, some people in the chat are asking, yeah, well, what about, uh, you know, Seth and Becky or or whoever? This this policy is, it is uh, specific to the employees of this corporation. Now, I shouldn't say specific. What they... They they say repeatedly, employ, 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 employ. And they mention that uh, we also work with, uh, forget the term they use, but, um, oh, man, this thing is so long. I just, affiliated individuals. Yes. They have relationships with affiliated individuals. Those include interns, temporary workers, vendors, and talent. 
Okay, yeah. because the talent are not employees. So if two wrestlers want to get into an intimate relationship, then, you know, that's fine. I don't think they need to report. But if, for example, you are a trainer for WWE and you want to get into a relationship with a talent, both of you have to uh, report that relationship. That's what they're trying to discourage here. Somebody in a position of power having a relationship with a subordinate. So that's what this policy is about. So it's it's largely, uh, you know, regarding employees, you know, people that work in various departments. But if an employee in a department wants to have a relationship with a wrestler, all of that has to be disclosed. You don't want, I mean, they explain everything here. Like, you don't want someone who's in charge of recruiting or, or uh, making decisions about who goes to the main roster to be in a relationship with a wrestler in developmental, for example, because that's going to cause all sorts of issues. So that's that's largely uh, what this is attempting to uh, eliminate. And uh, as far as like wrestlers dating each other, I mean, they don't seem to have any problem with that. You know, I wonder where they look at agent on that list, whether it falls more to the executive corporate side of things or whether it's the talent independent contractor side of things, because there was the Michael Hayes, Rosa Mendez relationship. And the reason I bring that one up is because it's public and because everybody knows about it, knows what had happened and what had reportedly happened between those two. So, you know, it, this is not like this is something new. We have Vince's NDA, which has one of them has to do with somebody that I believe had nothing to do with the company. They were an agent or something that they were brought on to do something there. And there was an issue. And that's one of the NDAs he signed. So, you know, it's just, again, hopefully this is just something that they can continue to build on. And, you know, good for Thurston and Pollock for getting this out there. In a uh, on a different note here, and uh, this one here is excellent news. The next three AEW pay per views will be available to purchase on Fight. Hallelujah! You Jeez. no longer have to stream them only on BR Live or try to. It will begin with next month's Dynasty, continue with May's Double or Nothing, and then Falcon Crest, and June's Forbidden Door. And after that, who knows? So uh, obviously there have been rumors for a long, long time about HBO Max and the infrastructure that HBO Max would need to... Uh, do they even call it HBO Max? It's just Max Just now? Max. Just Max. I'm old. But, uh, you know, they might be thinking, you know, later this year Max is going to be ready. But they've, they've only announced the next three shows from here through June's Forbidden Door. You'll be able to grab those on Fight. And thank God... Yeah, I hate really. to be our live. Can't I'm it. sure nice people work there. Mm. I have nothing against them. No, they didn't program this stupid app. Some of them might have, but uh, yeah, sad, sad stuff. You know, WWE for anything that they took, at least at the very beginning, they had uh, the BAM Network, the uh, Major League Baseball or whatever it was that did that, and they did a great job with theirs. They did a great job with the NHLs. You know, whatever they did. You know, copy that, everybody, because that seems to work okay for most of the people that use it. It's amazing how far ahead some of these streaming services are in comparison to others. You know, if you look at what Paramount's doing, it's not that much less than what Max is doing. It's just that Max has got a lot more on it, and it's just, it's a wild thing. And I, it's amazing. I don't know who would want to spend nine ninety nine for the Bleacher Report add-on to that app anyway, especially if you're paying... You know, for the, the, the Disney Hulu bundle without commercials, which is like nineteen ninety nine a month. You know, it seems like nothing of value comes with the BR app. And I got to be honest, I would rather pay Tony directly for an AEW app and an AEW library where you can have make it AEW's Honor Club. Mix those two things together. I would much rather have that. I don't know if it's in their best interest to do so because of the money that they could make by having their library go up somewhere else. But, man, I would be very happy if they did not go with the route of hooking up with a Max. I don't know why I have to explain this so many times to people <laughs> so, who are otherwise so intelligent. Are they still talking about uh, the uh, the article about Jack Perry? Or what, Jingu. What's the issue? Jingu, oh, Jingu, listen to me. <laughs> I understand that you can get the max app 
and immediately watch live sports. That's not the issue. They're beta testing CNN, Brian. The issue is a pay-per-view, okay? AW is not just moving live pay-per-views free onto the, the, the... You need to be able to buy them. You need to be able to order them, purchase them. That is different from live streaming sports. The pay-per-view aspect, that is what they are trying to get going here. When they have that... Then they'll be ready to go. I don't care what business you work in, okay? When it's ready, they're going to do it, okay? It's one piece of code. Well, why don't you put the piece of code in already? If you know so much about it. Now, on that note, hey, do you know we're going to Vegas for the uh, convention? F4WOnline.com slash Vegas. That's right. That's right. Got a lot of stuff coming up, May 24th through May 26th. Hey, you don't even have to watch the pay-per-view on Fight. You can watch the AW pay-per-view in the building. Live. If they ever announce it, which I hope they will at some point here. (laughs) But uh, it'll be in association with the uh, Double or Nothing show in Vegas that same weekend. And uh, you can join us for a all-you-can-eat steak dinner at Texas Day Brazil, a live Q&A, a live Brian and Vinny show, and meet and greet. We're going to be doing that on Saturday morning. Ed's running a wrestling show at the FSW Arena. We're going to have a sweet party. Details to come on that. A sweet party in the suite. It's going to be a sweet, sweet party. They always are. Brian and Vinny. (laughs) And uh, annual brunch at the Wicked Spoon. Tickets for all of these are available at F4WOnline.com slash Vegas. So uh, show up. Don't miss out, kids. It's going to be a lot of fun. And I should also mention that uh, immediately following this show here today, video.f4wonline.com or twitch.tv slash f4w video. We're live, pal! Or in the words of King Curtis Ikea, we're live, pal! (laughs) The chairman of the board! Actually, that sounded more like Terry Funk. But regardless, at uh, at, uh, 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific, we're live, pal, with Andrew Zarian and Garrett. And uh, they will have Dave on. He's going to be doing a live Q&A. So stick around after that. Ask your questions. And uh, away we go. And you better get those Q&As into Dave while you can, because unfortunately he will not be at the convention. So you're going to have double up on Vinny. Yeah, yeah. Double up on old Vinny. The very first time you can ever go to a Vinny, a Brian and Vinny Q&A and meet and greet. This is your chance. I want to meet Craig. Well, one of these days, maybe we'll do a Brian and Craig Q&A. Now, can't it just be a Craig Q&A? Just give him the break for once? Yeah, just let Craig talk about music for an hour? I don't so care. That would be pretty cool. I don't care. Why am I not going to Mania this year? Well, it's a long story. I'm actually pretty sad about it, but... Normally, we, we when we go to Mania, like we have things built around Mania to uh, offset costs. I mean, it's not cheap to go to mania two days Scared of the east coast and uh you know i've gone a million times but dave didn't want to do a q a and uh it just uh didn't work out what if we so, offered a fist fight on the beach you know there's another issue that i don't want to talk about right now unrelated to uh to wrestlemania but that's uh, angry that's all right uh we got to talk about this cmll dos leyendas show which is coming up friday and the main event, obviously, is Brian Danielson, John Moxley, Claudio Castagnoli, and it was supposed to be Wheeler Yuta against Volador, Mystico, Blue Panther, and Ultimo Guerrero. Uh, this this show, you know, this is one of those deals, you know. I talk about advertising. They advertised this show long in advance, and it sold out three weeks in advance, which almost never happens in Mexico. I, even when you advertise it, it almost never happens in Mexico. It shows you the allure of Danielson coming down. And again, this fu- there are those Friday night shows are really fun to watch. So uh, the situation with Wheeler is he has been out since January 10th. And according to Dave, like he can't even fly, which tells me probably... A concussion related issue that's a really bad because one. i mean you know adam cole guys if you knew the state of that guy's ankle he's flying everywhere so my presumption is it is a concussion issue or blood clots and uh the real bad news i mean the bad news obviously is that he's not cleared but 
the good news, if you want to call it that, is, uh, you know, it's 2024. It ain't 1996. If you can't get cleared, you're not getting cleared. And you're not going to do anything until you are medically cleared. So that is a good thing. But we'll talk about this more and a lot of other news after the break. Observer Live. Um, scrolling Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it, they're saying this was the match of the year. You mm-hmm. know, Takeshita. How are you feeling? Your first official match at AGW. They're already calling it match of the year. How are you feeling? I mean, I've got a lot to top now, haven't I? Like, I mean, look, once again, like, I, I can't do those type of matches without a great, like, partner to do it with. Takeshita is every bit as good as Will Ospreay. It's just on that night, I was just better, pure and simple. But, like, Look at the move that I had to put him away with. Uh, the Tiger Driver, and I keep saying this so much, man. The Tiger Driver 91 is the most dangerous move in wrestling. It is not, it, it was used back in the day by Mr. Haru Masawa. And I said that right, didn't I? I'm yeah. sure I did. But like, <laughs> I'm actually I forgot that wrong, didn't I? Be like, <laughs> but like, it was one of the most dangerous moves in wrestling. And like, some guys like, some guys are able to like, kind of, figure out a way of getting out of it but like it's a complete pressure on your neck man it is just, it's a sheer drop like I, I wouldn't be surprised in like the five months time like people will be like hey you can't do that move anymore but just like this is what i bring to the table man like i'm one of the most dangerous professional wrestlers in the world look i am a lovely man i, I will walk your mum across the street any day of the week i will happily give you a cuddle if you're ever feeling sad i'm always a good shoulder to cry on and i look after you to the day i die but i am one mean motherfucker when i want to be like that's all i care about man so like if this is so this is the first pay-per-view of aew's year for 2024 right so we got dynasty probably got forbidden door we've got uh double nothing double nothing all in all out uh full gear no, wrestle dream full gear and world's end yeah yeah that's the first yeah. one Let's go. Let's go. Like I said, the most dangerous man in wrestling right now, bro. Yes, sir. Um, D Dowdy, uh, 104.5 FM, WCCG. Uh, Will, question for you. Um, throughout the match, there were a lot of aha moments, a lot of momentum shifting. How were you able to stay focused and adapt to, to catch this offense? Uh, a lot of it has just been like. Uh, experience over in Japan, dude. Like, I mean, once again, I, I have watched Takeshi. Like, I was a fan of him. I saw him live at 2019, and uh, one of my mates at the time went, "God damn, he's sexy." And I was like, <laughs> so I was sitting next to him. I was just like, "Hey, you, you're all right. Calm down, mate." But yeah, he is, isn't he? But uh, it, when it, well, those type of matches are happening, like, I just kind of like remain uh, for my training what I did in Japan because with that, it's, it's endurance based. You have to keep your timing right. You have to keep your energy levels down. Like not get too freaked out in those moments because like there's a lot of like heavy shots. So the moment you start freaking out and breathing heavy and like not uh, not uh, creating space from your opponent, that's when you're gonna find yourself in like difficult positions. Bless you. Uh, but for me, like it, it's not a, a rodeo. Uh, it's not a ride that I haven't ridden before. Uh, I'm very much aware of like my. Um, I think my benefit throughout a lot of these guys is um, my my gas is kind of good uh, uh, my breathing like my cardio that's a funny kind of thing you see he did a lot of brain damage uh, boom and like, <laughs> Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. I'll talk about Raw here in a moment, but uh, first, Nigel McGuinness recently got back in the ring. He was on Wrestling Weekly, and he was talking about Danielson, and he said, the time I was in WWE, it was difficult for me. I don't want to say the jealousy, but the bitterness, those sort of emotions currently existed between me and Brian and the success that he has had. When I was in WWE, seeing so many of my peers coming up, having that level of success, that level of fame and fortune was very difficult for me to accept, especially when I could still wrestle today. I got in the ring last week, felt perfectly okay. Sometimes people think it's a lot easier if you choose yourself to quit. I don't think that's the case. He says, just for the record, as some people seem misinformed, I was always okay to wrestle. I never retired because of injuries. And he then said, given my history in terms of concussions, boy, does this ring a bell for me. Given my history in terms of concussions, I didn't have a lot of concussions, but the rest of this, I do watch a lot of matches and go, couldn't do that anymore. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's why I don't wrestle. It's, what happens when you get older? It's not not just that, dude, but, like, even <laughs> I if I were 20, like, I just look at this. When I, when I came up, I watched wrestling, and I thought, I could do that. Now I watch wrestling, and it's like, like, I couldn't do that, and I don't even think people should. It's just it's <laughs> really? nuts nowadays. So, uh, you know, him and Danielson, I think uh, – that's oh, good. I'm glad to hear that because uh, let me say, I like Nigel McGuinness. I like him on color commentary. I think sometimes he pushes it too far with the heel stuff. He's not as good as Ventura or Piper or many others over the years. And I think he goes so heavy against Danielson that you got to have a match between the two at some point down the line because he's gone. He has talked about Danielson, Brian, in a way where it's like, I mean, are you doing the match? I mean, he's got to be doing I'm the match. I'm pretty sure right? he's I mean, doing the match. It's just going to be a matter of where, and the one that makes the most sense, we'll, we'll see you in London. It's just, do you want to do Danielson on that big of a show? Will you have something else for him? But if not, boy, that's that's kind of perfect. Or if you do a TV show that week, and, and I don't know what their schedule is going to be like, but if they happen to do TV over somewhere in the U.K., Boy, again, that would be great that week. So we got to talk about Raw, and I got to explain this because I already know where this is going. Wait, wait. Really? You need to explain last night being a great show? No, I got to explain this. The oh. yeah, but, and the comparisons, okay? Mm. Yes, they didn't advertise Rock for the show. Oh, boy. And uh, not only did they not advertise him for the show, they didn't advertise him twice. And uh, I actually... I know people are going to get mad, but let's be real. This was really clever, okay? Because this place is on fire. It is at least their 11th straight sellout for television. This was the most what the most attended raw show since the pandemic. Over 15,000 people were there. They advertised CM Punk. They had all sorts of things announced for this show. And Rock was a surprise. And the thing is, they've advertised Rock for every time he's been on SmackDown. They're advertising Rock for next week's Raw. I thought it was extremely clever on a show where he was not advertised to A, have him make a surprise appearance. So if you missed it as you're a viewer, you're like, I need to watch this show every week. And it was even more, I would even go as far as say ballsy. You know, normally they do the thing, and, and AEW should have done this with Mercedes. When Mercedes came out, and then they were going to have her appear again at the end of the show, she should have made it so clear she was coming out at the end of the show. But she didn't. And if you look at the ratings pattern, everyone turned the show off, and the final quarter did like, it was terrible. And uh, here, they essentially told you, Rock is leaving. He did his thing. He's done for the night. But then he came out at the very end of the show as another surprise. So, hey, it's just like anything. Advertise, 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 advertise. And 5% of the time, do some gigantic surprise. But you shouldn't be doing a giant surprise 100% of the time. Like, save your surprises. Use them for when you need them. And Rock, my God, this guy... I mean, God, he just makes these shows such massive big deals when he is there. So Cody comes out to open the show, and, you know, the people are super into him. They're going crazy. He's doing his promo for Mania. He's asking the fans to, to be there for him. And suddenly, Rock's music hit, and this place melted down that they got The Rock. Like, they just wanted CM Punk. Well, now here comes The Rock. And The Rock gets in the ring. And this guy, I can't wait to see the quarter this did. Because I think they spent three minutes just looking at each other, unmoving. <laughs> and, like, the place is going nuts! And so, finally, Rock puts his hands behind his back. And he gets in close. And he says something we can't hear. And Cody's like, what? And Rock smiles. And he walks away. And so throughout the show, like first they interview Rock, 
He says, ask Cody. Later, they ask Cody. Cody says, doesn't matter. He's not going to be able to make it. And so for those of you wondering, because I did read his lips, his exact words in the ring when he whispered into Cody Rhodes' ears were, where did I put it? Oh, wrong wrong report here. Will you stop it? I want to get the exact words. Okay. He leaned into Cody Rhodes and he said, Tonight, I'm going to make you bleed. So many words to remember. It was. I don't want to mess that up. I don't want to say, Tonight, I'm going to make you put ketchup on your forehead from the hot dog vendor. Because that's not what he said. He said, Tonight... I'm going to make you bleed. And show sure enough. Do we have to have this argument again? This is a different company. Yes, some things are the same. Some things won't change. But the blade is back. Oh, my. The irony of the story about that memo going out. You know, I actually believe the memo. You know what I think the story with the memo is? I think the story with the memo is they don't want you to swear unless it's pre-approved. So they know about it and they can bleep it and out. And they can bleep it, it out in advance. Yeah. I, and I think, that, I think that's crowd? all it is. There are people who got that memo, okay? There are. There are others who have not heard anything about it. Maybe the people that got it are the people that have made mistakes in the past. For example, I probably would have gotten the memo. I've screwed up once or twice here. A few. But, you know, if I told Dom, you know, Dom, in in the middle of the Rocks deal, I'm going to loudly say what he said, so have your finger, you know, maybe that's how it is. But anyway, Cody, I mean, he used the term wank fest. Can I say that on the air, Dom? That's what Cody said. Well, he said that. Yeah. And uh, And there's been profuse swearing, particularly by The Rock. I mean, The Rock was stealing lines from the Big Lebowski. This is what happens. <laughs> when Alp you, is where you can go. What about the Alps? <laughs> That's a, it's beating a stranger in the Alps. When you beat a stranger, a stranger in, the in the Alps. Yeah, when you when when the when the final boss is in the Alps. That's what it is here. So so at the end of the show, you know, there's a big brawl. Cody's beating up Jimmy's beating up Solo, and all of a sudden here is the Rock, and like people went, "What? He's back." And he starts beating the bejesus. I mean, this was the most one-sided. Cody got nothing. And I will give Rock credit. I mean, he didn't do a lot, but, like, he didn't get tired. He beat this guy for, like, 15 straight minutes. He can do a tag match. No problem. Like Cody got tired of getting beat up so much. He beat this guy, <laughs> and it was even better because this, you know what? The juice was not fortuitous, but you know what was fortuitous? The freaking rain. Yes. Rock takes him outside the building. Onto, like, the roof, I think. And, man, it's pouring down rain. The only thing that uh, that we didn't get was, like, lightning. That would have made it better. But it's pouring down rain. And The Rock has beaten this dude. And he rips his, his, uh, his shirt off. And Cody's, like, just getting drenched. And then, you know, Rock talks about the prophecy coming true, which was the line earlier. Tonight, I will make you bleed. I'm going to make you bleed. And Cody's, he's bleeding. He's like, he's got blood. And at first I looked at it and I thought, that's very red. I think that's stage blood. But then Rock comes up to him and he starts smearing the blood and he's putting it all over his weight belt. And the more he spears, the more blood comes out. I was like, nope, he cut himself wide open. <laughs> this Rhodes, this is the time of his life. Make it good. And he beats this guy, and he cuts a promo on him, and he cuts a promo on Mama Rhodes. Your daddy talked about hard times. He doesn't know about hard times. But you're going to know about hard times, boy. The Rock is going to learn you about hard times. And then he says, this is what happens when you, with the final boss, which they bleeped out. And, God, this Rock. The Rock on Friday said... 
he was going to leave or two Fridays ago said he, to Cody's mama, I'm going to put blood on this weight belt. It's going to be filled with your son's, well, piss and blood. And that's exactly what was laid up upon that belt that Rock took off to show to everybody. It was a incredible finish to the show. It really was. Yeah, this was, uh, this was awesome. What a great show. I mean, look. The show were, was, the show really was quite great. Yes. I mean. Surprise appearances. There was chaotic energy. There were viral moments like you had with Becky Punch and Dom. You had cheeky insider stuff between Drew and Punk and Becky and Rhea. You had actual wrestling. You, a lot of times when you get all this other stuff, you don't get wrestling. We had Reed and Sami Zayn went through a break. Andrade and, and Vinci went through a break. That was good. JD and Ricochet was really good. And that was a match that showed off some of their production changes that they made when they got back from break they had that long still shot that they decided to use and it can't be said enough how much the production has gotten better so when you include all the the subtlety of paul and drew talking in the background that a lot of people didn't notice when you look at the melodrama between a lot of the the stuff that went on it really was a great raw episode it really was well the other thing that we got to talk about is this uh <laughs> we don't have time to talk about it the cm punk seth rollins drew mcintyre segment <laughs> which i watched that and by the time it was over i thought that had to be 45 minutes. And so I went back, and it was actually only 23 minutes. But it went, I don't know how long it was supposed to go, but it went way longer than it was supposed to go. They were drastically cutting throughout the rest of that hour to get things back on track. And these three guys, I mean, it's all a work. But they were they were skating that line. Ribbon on the square? Especially CM Punk and Drew. <laughs> I almost think that the two of them were like, let's just go out there. And they were trolling each other hardcore. <laughs> and you could just see, I mean, so great. Punk looked like he was actually kind of like, you know, I don't know, man. And then Drew's just having the time of his life. He's sitting back in that chair with his feet up. He's just like, and then Seth, I mean, it was wild. Seth getting every, hey, look, for Seth, getting the reaction he got right in Punk's face. You know, he took that. Look, everybody got something in that exchange. It was very good. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Keith Elliott Greenberg with Inside the Ropes magazine. What's up, Keith? This is a very historic night tonight, and there were a number of legends in the arena. Uh, were you able at some point to slow down enough to glean any knowledge or at least inspiration from those legends? So this honestly is, I hope I'm allowed to say it, but like, so I, I was like, ah, ah, backstage the doctor was like, all right, on the table, we'll just put some ice on your butt. And like, I was like laying on the table, was, ah. <laughs> and then like, Ric Flair walked in and I was like, ah, and stood up. <laughs> And he was just, and he said, uh, "You are everything I've heard of, and more. You are one of the best wrestlers in the world." And that coming from him is just like, "Thank you, Mr. Ric Flair. Thank you very much." Because he's a standard. Like I, I know, like I know, sometimes I like, guess forgotten about, but like every like little bit of wrestling has some like inspiration from Ric Flair, man. So like the fact that he was able to like just come over and just go like, "You're the fucking man," is like, man, amazing, like brilliant stuff. I'm a bit of a two-parter. Uh, Tony, you were present for a pretty crazy match that Will had a couple weeks ago. I'm interested to hear like what goes through your mind when somebody who you've already invested in is having a, a, a match like that, which is incredible but also uh, risky. And Will, when we had spoke prior, you, you communicated how important it was for you to still be able to live in the UK. Uh, how important was that to coming here and, and what kind of schedule will you be on moving forward? Well, I, I was a tremendous match. That was an amazing, amazing, amazing match for Will to finish up in Rev Pro. And after a great run in New Japan Rev Pro, I thought Will versus Michael Oku was a great match. And I was really blown away, not only by the quality of the wrestling, but also uh, really the quality of people. I got to meet Will Ospreay's family for the first time, which was really cool. Was the, so sweet, dude. You're the man. And uh, the, the great things he said afterwards, it was just really kind. And uh, I thought the way he helped uh, 
really set up his debut in AEW and also paid tribute to the great fans in the UK that helped him get to this place. It was really a great thing and it was great to be there. And of course, the match took a big toll, I think physically, but knowing it's Will Ospreay, you know, I had a high confidence he was going to be here, be ready for revolution. And uh, he was everything we would have expected. The match was everything we would have expected. I thought Ospreay versus Takeshita delivered, revolution delivered. And again, I think Will Ospreay in AEW fits like a glove, as you're seeing here tonight uh, firsthand. Thank you, Sean. I'm basically Wolverine, brother. I'll be fine in like a couple <laughs> of days. Just heal up. In the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Got a full report on Raw. Last night's Wrestling Observer Radio with Dave. Or if you're a subscriber, my my Raw report. And SmackDown, Dynamite, Collision, Pay-Per-Views. All of my uh, reports go up for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Or if you're a subscriber on my X, you get those as well. Actually, the you? earliest. The fact of being first. America's preeminent professional wrestling writer, like the ways you used yes. to be back when F4W Weekly was there. Back when I wrote things and people understood it before I lost my touch. <clears throat> what can you do? But anyway, you can go up and read that report right now if you'd like to. And uh, tonight, Brian and Vinny and Granny and Craig and Sean will be doing our Tuesday night show. And we will be reviewing WWF challenge season one episode five it's awesome my favorite show that i have been reviewing every week including my favorite wrestler of all time this week king curtis iakea <laughs> he is the greatest he is the greatest so hopefully he's all over the show tonight he certainly was last week like that segment he did with sika Last oh week God. on the beaches of Samoa, I was I watched Samoa! it. I watched it multiple times. <laughs> Absolutely loved it. But anyway, that's tonight for subscribers. WrestlingObserver.com or video.f4wonline.com. Whether you want audio or video, you got options. So check it out. And uh, that's it, everybody. Thanks for listening, Mike. As always, callers and listeners. Old Dom, Dom with the dump button. Everybody, in the studio. We'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.